Recording in progress. All right. You guys can everybody can mute, please. Um, we're really going to be going over what the appointment setting protocol is going to be looking like. We want everybody to have the same idea and we want everybody to be uniform and on the same page when setting appointments, when putting it on the calendar, um, just to make sure as, as I'm sure that all of you guys have seen how the calendar looks, it gets very, very full, very, very fast. Now, the one thing that makes it easier, not only for us senior agents, um, lenders, it makes it easier for everybody, for all of us to kind of see what's going on, all of us to make sure who's available, who's unavailable. And this is basically the whole setup for the appointment setting protocol um, and how it should be done. So if I go on to slide number two here, huh? um, slide number two here, our main goal for appointment setting Obviously, goal number one is going to be ring the bell, right? In terms of ringing the bell, hard work pays off. Ringing the bell, let everybody know. It gets you excited, it gets you pumped, it gets you ready to go. Um, after you ring the bell and celebrate, the second thing you're gonna wanna do, what's up, Tony? Yeah, hey, uh, can you unfloor your uh, background so you know people uh, can see the screen? Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Hold on one second. Let me share my screen too. I'll show your background. You you flooring it. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Okay. Can you guys see my screen on your computer? Or is it the wrong screen? I can see. Well, you're sharing your screen. Which screen is it? Yeah. Is it this one? It's that. Okay. Um. So thanks, Tony. First and foremost, like I said, ring that bell. Celebrate. You guys set an appointment. You guys are excited. The energy is raging through you. You're going to make something happen. You possibly might have a new client. Right after that, you're going to go into the Google Calendar, right? Now, the purpose of the Google Calendar is, sorry, my font is super small. So the purpose of the Google Calendar is not only to let everybody know, hey, my appointment's at this time. The Google Calendar is also for lenders, senior agents, junior agency specialists, to know who is going to be available and not available at that time. Always keep the assumption that if there is nothing on the Google calendar, whether it's one of us saying I'm out for the day or unavailable the whole day, generally you wanna let everybody know. If Connie's gonna be unavailable for the whole day of today, go ahead and put it on the calendar so people know I'm not gonna book Connie at this time or Connie all day, she's not available for an appointment, right? One of the things that happens is always look because sometimes I even for Rudy, right? Rudy, for example, is generally unavailable on the weekend, right? Now, it's hold on, there's some people, more people joining. One second. Sorry, guys. Um, and there are going to be some people that are unavailable on the weekend. People such as Rudy are not available on the weekend, sometimes Deliri, sometimes myself, sometimes Mitch always make sure that you guys are looking right at the top because it will let you know who is unavailable. Sometimes it's difficult. I know you guys want to set an appointment. Hey, AJ, I set an appointment. I booked it on Saturday. Oh, shoot. You're not available. Then we have a, then we have a conflict. Then we have to try and figure it out. I'm like, hey, Herbie, can you do a console? Can you cover for me for Saturday? Connie booked me on Saturday, but I'm in Lake Tahoe as an example, right? Then we have to work on cover-ups and kind of switching everything around. So if you just look first, be very, very careful about it. And another thing too, and let's say that the day's free. There are no notifications. There are no reminders that nobody is gonna be available. Everybody looks, there's no one out today. Then you look at the time slots here and then you can figure out as to which times senior agents and lenders are available, right? You don't wanna say, hey, Thomas, I booked an appointment at two o'clock with Yesenia, right? And then you look over there and you're like, oh shoot, Yesenia already has a lender at two o'clock. Right now Probably we're trying to wanna, figure it out. Don't want to do them back to back either, right? Go yeah, on. and you always want to give at least maybe thirty minutes of a buffer time. Some lenders and some agents we can kind of navigate it. I've done five consults in like six hours. Yeah, it's tiring. Can we do it? Sure, but if there's any availability to kind of give each person like a little bit of a breather, some time to ramp up, it's not always going to happen that way. But if there is that opportunity, 
then, you know, obviously making it a little bit more comfortable for everybody. Now, apart from this, you will, apart from this, one of the main things that you guys have to remember when setting these appointments is the structure of how you put it on the calendar. This is the most important part, right? Now, the reason that I want to say this, and I'm not, I'm not here to say that anybody's wrong, but let's say, let's just use this one, for example, the Mansi Sharma at 1.30 to 2.30 p.m., right? Now, as you guys can see over here, sometimes if it's in the same time slot, it pushes everything back. You may not be able to see all of the names, right? You're looking over here, it says Alliant Team Zoom Link, PRG Weekly Training, but what if it was over here? What if it blocked off a majority of the people that are on it? Right mm -hmm. now, when you visually look at the calendar, you're not going to say, oh, shoot, who is Mansi Sharma? Not knowing if this is blocked off, that it's Yesenia and Mallory, mm -hmm. right? Then you're going to book them at that time. Oh, shoot, you didn't see my console? Well, it wasn't titled, right? Put names first. Right? So what you want to do when structuring yeah. the calendar is you want it to be exactly like this. Rob, Blanca, or... Rob, Blanca, contractor walk, walk through. This one could have been a little bit cleaner. My best one that I like is Blanca, Manny, Luis, real estate consultation. I don't need to know what they're doing. I don't need to know if they're having an offer consult. I don't need to know if they're having a buyer's consult, listing presentation, whatever it is. All I need to know as an agent is Blanca, Manny, and Luis are busy at 3 p.m. Right. So the way that you want to title it, if you guys want to take down the note, is you want to title it basically uh, senior agent, junior agent or team specialist, partnered agent, lender, and then whatever title you want to make it. Buyer's consultation, first time buyer's presentation. And then in parentheses, what I like to do personally is right at the end, in parentheses, I'll put the client's name just so I don't forget, just so if the lender's looking for it. She has the first and last name as to who to look for on Firepoint. Because you can put buyer's presentation, whatever. But let's say Blanca Manny Luis. Let's say Blanca wants to figure out who she's having a consultation for. There's no name, right? That's an extra step. I'm going to have to reach out to me. Hey, who this consult at three? What was the name of the client, right? And for the lenders, uh, if they had a lender on file, who, who's the, who are we meeting with? Who, who's the client? How, how am I going to look up the notes? How am I going to get their DIC? Because one thing you have to remember is... Once we add on a lender, they haven't looked at the file unless you remind them up to this point, right? They're going to say, okay, maybe this person's name is Thomas, the client's name. They'll go into Firepoint, look up Thomas's name. Okay, this is his DIC. Then they'll write the, the estimate as to what they can afford using their DIC, right? Nobody else needs to know that except the people that are on here. Now, oops, I admit these two people. Now, how I want it to look, and I'll give you guys an example here, if it'll let me open it, right? So this is how you would want it to look. And this is just kind of an example that I want you guys to follow. So senior agent, AJ, right? Let's say with junior agent, I'll have Charles. And then let's say with the lender, I'm gonna be using Deliri, right? Buyers consultation. And then you would basically put client's name, Connie. This is how I like to do it. This is how a lot of the senior agents like to do it. And I would, put, I would obviously put your last name, right? Now, taking it a step further, which you guys always should be doing, is looking for the clear time. Then you're going to want to add the guests, right? You're going to add the lender. This is, the, this is heavily important. Add the lender, add the senior agent, add any party who is going to be joining Right now, if you get the senior agent level and somebody wants to sit in, let's say Richard wants to sit in or whatever it may be, add all of those people. Right. It's the worst thing in the world when you have something on the calendar and everybody sees it, but no one has an invitation. Right. What's the point of having Manny, Blanca and Luis on a on a consult invitation if they're not invited? Yeah. Right. Then we have to look for it. Then we don't get any notifications. Right. So like after you add the guest, let's just say Deliri. How, how hard is it to add a guest after it's it's pretty easy to add a guest, but like I said, the it's process is it's just you'd be adding another step, yeah. right? So you're already here. Add guest, you know, whoever you want to do, Mitch, 
right? Whatever it is, you add that guest, Charles, whoever you're gonna be adding, right? Now, this is the one that you're gonna want to change, right? You don't want it for your own personal calendar. That doesn't, no one's gonna see it if it's on your personal calendar. You want everybody to see it so you can broadcast it to the whole team who is available, who is not available. If it's on my specific calendar, no one's going to see it. Like no one's going to know I'm booked at one o'clock to 2 p.m. Right. So make sure you change it to the team PRG calendar. So once you change this, it should change the icon and logo. And then one thing that you're also going to have to do after you find the time, you add the guest where you're going to put after creating a Zoom is in this line here. I'll show you guys in a second. After, after we create the Zoom link, this is where all of the copy stuff on the clipboard is going to go, right? Now, another thing that you guys want to do, let's see, add notifications. Please don't forget to add notifications, right? I like to do it 30 minutes before, right? I like to do it one hour before, and then I like to do another one. 10 minutes before, right? It seems kind of annoying. It seems kind of monotonous. It seems like, damn, I'm going to be bugging my clients. But when your client keeps getting a notification on their phone, hey, 30 minutes, one hour, 10 minutes, then they really can't have the excuse like, oh, sorry, I'm driving. I didn't get, I, I didn't remember that we had an appointment that day, right? I'm, hey, I'm giving you an hour's time for the promised appointment that you said that we made to either get home, put your kids down, eat dinner, right? It's just the extra step to kind of, it's the extra step that we also utilize to make sure that they show up because they can't give you the excuse. Oh, I forgot. You're going to be like, I reminded you three times. <laughs> if you forgot, then you chose not to go. But you didn't forget if I sent three consistent. And we know how annoying those can be on our phone, right? Boom, Google Calendar invite meeting with Charles at one o'clock. Oh, there's Charles again, 30 minutes. All right, I'm going to sit at my desk, 10 minutes. Charles, me with Charles, right? Mm -hmm. Does that send the reminders to everyone that's added to everybody? Yep. The reminders go to every single person added onto the guest list. Now, I'm going to go into the team Zoom. Right now, this is how you schedule a meeting. Right, so you ask Adriana, Andrea, or any of the senior agents, or whoever may know the password for the Zoom login for the team Zoom login. Once you've logged into Zoom you will have access to be able to create an appointment for your team members. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you schedule a meeting, this web page is gonna open up. And then what I like to do to make everything uniform once again, is I'll go back after I created the title, I'll copy this, then I'll go back into scheduling a meeting and then I'll copy it right there, right? Nothing changes, it's the same sort of thing. Now. In terms of the time frame that you're going to be doing it, 1 p.m. today, nothing changes here. And then you go ahead and you save it. Right. Once it's saved, what you're going to want to do is now copy the invitation. Right. You can either copy the invitation meeting here. You can you control C it, control copy paste. I like to copy it here, copy it to my clipboard, bring it down to the description here, right? And then you paste it, right? And here's all the meeting things, right? That's exactly how you guys do it. Now, I like to take it a little bit, of, I even like to take it a step further. I like to make the Zoom as easy as possible to locate. So I'll go ahead and add the Zoom to the loco location there, right? Because it's the first thing that pops up, if, you know, when you look at the bottom part, you're like, man, that's, I don't know which one to click. But if you say the location is right here, you just click this single link, easy enough for you to see, right? So now if I go ahead and I schedule this, right? Would you like, a, would you, would you like to send invitation emails to the Google Calendar guest? Send, right? The following guests are outside of your organization. Invite all guests. Boom. Now everybody can see it. You have your own personal one right next to it. So this white one is Mike that shows up on my personal calendar. This is the team one. And then now you can see everybody on the team will know AJ, Charles, Deliri. They're having a buyer's consultation at one o'clock with Connie, 
right? Easy enough. Now you see the Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting right here. Easy one click. Boom. Now everybody is easy enough to get onto the consultation. So it'll show doubled whenever you make one for yourself. It's on your personal account. Yeah. Hand. Okay. Yeah. So that's generally the way that you do it. Now, um, the second part of my oh, where'd it go? My presentation is we've created the Zoom link, we've created the Google Calendar. Copy everything just as uniform. Because let's say, like I keep saying, the more uniform it is, the more structured it is, the easier it's going to be moving forward. Rob doesn't have to second guess. Oh shoot, you know, somebody did it wrong or or nobody got a Zoom invite for a meeting. Just please follow this protocol and everything I promise you will be 100% easier. Everything will be organized, your life will be easier. Nothing will we're not going to have to chase anybody. Now, the most important part I like to kind of think of is the follow up. So depending on when you send over the invite, let's I always try one of the best practices that I like to do is I like to send the, the, or I like to have the consult as soon as possible, mm -hmm. whether it be within 24 to 48 hours. I try not to stretch it to 72 hours. I know that there are some clients that are like, hey, meet me in two weeks or a week. Maybe that's what they have to do. But if you can etch it anytime forward, it's definitely for the better. But let's say it happens a week. You know, let's say it's Wednesday right now. There has to be, hey, I'm going to be free next Wednesday. Now, what are you going to do within that time frame? You're just going to let the invite sit, right? No, oh, well, I'll see you in a week. I'll talk to you in a week. A lot can happen in a week. Prices can go up. Interest rates can hike up. Properties that they initially talked to you about are now pending and gone. The comps have changed. That's a really, really long time. Now, what I like to do is I like to be in front of their face. Hey, just wanted to check in. Has there been any properties that you guys found interesting that you guys might want to check out? Why? It may be a little bit more work on my end, but am I providing more value up front, right? Now, how are you going to compete? And say, hey, I found this property. I know we haven't really had a formal arrangement to meet yet, but I really think you'd like this home, right? It's a three bedroom, two bath and evergreen at your specific price point. Let's go ahead and check it out. And then when we meet the following Wednesday, we can really go over the numbers and see if this is something we want to move forward in, right? Because you never know. What if you had the opportunity to check out that property they have the buyer's consultation with you. They love you. They qualify. And now you've just turned a buyer's consultation into an also offer consultation. Yeah, you know, everything looks good, AJ. I really like that house. Thanks for showing us. And it's still on the market by the time that when we meet, you may even entice them to meet sooner. I've had clients that I was working with Louie. We, I told Louie, follow up, send them properties. They toured the house. They ended up touring the same. They ended up touring a property that we sent over. They wanted to push our meeting forward, right? Because they wanted. They were like, "No, no, let's let's meet AJ tomorrow. Let's. Uh, we want to meet with a lender tomorrow. Let, no, let's talk, right?" We met with that client that same day. This is a true. And there's a reason why I'm bringing up this story. After they pushed that forward, after I did the buyer's consultation, we submitted an offer on that house. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but you can kind of see. We're in the business of pushing the needle forward as close as we can, right? There's no point in having this amazing conversation, ringing the bell. The clients are excited to meet with Connie. Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready to get pre-qualified. And then a week goes by. Now they're like, oh, shoot. Another agent reached out. Thomas, Thomas from your team reached out and he said he could meet me in two days. Or Charles reached out 24 hours. and he, you, you, know, you don't know what can happen in seven days, right? Now... Alongside all of this, do all of you know how to do the appointment set canned response? Okay, so apart from, apart, so once all of this is pretty much completed, and one of the things that I want you guys to remember is everything that you're going to be doing, especially all of these kind of, this is more like clerical work. Right. This is clerical and organizational work. We don't want you doing this stuff during prospecting hours. So if you book an appointment, don't jump right into FirePoint and say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to put the appointment set can response. I'm going to make the Google calendar. I'm going to do all this other stuff that can wait. That's clerical. You can do that. I can do I can do all of this in like three minutes. Right mm -hmm. now, what you don't want to do is while you guys are learning, spending 15, 20, 30 minutes trying to do this and take your time, that's going to take out of your prospecting time. 
who's to say that within that time frame you can't book five more appointments you go back to your list on your notebook and say well i booked charles connie richard dj and rudy then you go back later on in the day after maybe six o'clock after a call session and then you really get into working i don't stop working at six o'clock and i don't think any of you should either i think that's kind of like this i would say 9 a.m to 6 is like the bare minimum i usually work until 9 30 to 10 at night and i wake up at 5 30 in the morning right that's just how i like to do my business that's why i feel like i'm having a lot of success is by having this type of structure having this strategy moving forward now i'll go ahead and briefly go into the appointment set if i can find my mouse yeah, or if any of you guys see my mouse, let me know. Bottom right. Well, now it's left. Oh, there you go. I don't know if I'm so, I got you. Okay. let's just use this one for an example, right? So when you go into the appointment set canned response, this is the most important thing. If you guys don't do this one, and you can track it on CSU, but a lot of us still utilize this one. I think Enrique and Jason are working on implementing the two together. So whichever one you do it on, it should automatically direct it. But to keep it kind of formal with what we've been utilizing, you're gonna go ahead and go to email. You're gonna go ahead and click the little clipboard on the upper right corner for all of the templates. Then you're gonna go into appointment set canned response. This is what you have to do to let everybody know this is where you're gonna put the DIC, the LBM, everything, right? Now, First things first, as you can see, as it's bolded with asterisks here, right? Oops. Delete the client's email. So first thing you do is jump onto this point right here and make sure you just take that out. It is not a good thing to send this email to your clients. You're gonna be like, ah, so this is all the email and everything that he sent me. Like, okay, this is like all like the office stuff. Now, what you wanna do is Go to the bottom here. You want to email this to prgappointments at gmail.com. You're going to put it. You're going to put it. You're going to put it into this line here, and then you're going to select it, right? And it's going to auto populate. Now, let's say you have a lender, right? This is all the information that the lender needs to know. You're going to want to send this over to Delivery Desai, Peter. Yesenia, Mallory, whoever it is, right? Now, if there's a senior agent, you're going to want to CC them to them too, Mitch, right? Mitch is going to get the email if Charles booked the appointment, right? And then everything is pretty much, um, I guess it's it states in its name. You're going to put the client client's name. Is this client a buyer or a seller? Who was the appointment set by? What day did you set the appointment? Date that the appointment is scheduled, the source, the source is whatever lead source it came from. Open House, Zillow Flex, Partner Connect, Redfin, Trulia, Upnest, whatever it is. You put it, you put it on there because it lets them figure out the compensation values or referral agreement, where did it come from? Is it a sphere, et cetera? You don't want to miss this one because let's say you get a contract under a sphere. You're like, all right, well, this is my sphere. Then why'd you label it Zillow Flex? That's 35% gone, right? <laughs> when you should be getting no referral. Now, the price range of the sale, property location what's their timing do they own or rent are they pre-approved yes or no right if they're pre-approved yes all good if they're not what's their credit score down payment yearly income and the closing question who, who knows what the closing question is no 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 cool so what the closing question is is hey mr buyer mr client if everything makes sense and all the numbers look right are you ready to get the ball rolling however you want to spin that Right. Hey, you know, if everything's all good and you know you're ready to buy, you're ready to get this started, whatever it may be. Right. And then they say, No, yeah, I'm 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 ready to go. I'm serious about this. Like I'm excited. Then you let them know. And then next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and then change the status here. Right. So it's set as hot, you'll set it to appointment set. Right. Is that the add to fire point search point on that signature? What was that? Is that so? When it says add to Firepoint search, are you just changing the status of the? Yeah. Okay. And or well, so when it, when you said add to Firepoint search, Under you're going to go into searching here, okay. and then you're going to put the criteria that they're looking in. So if you go ahead and go to the search box, mm -hmm. and they're looking for a three bedroom, two bath in San Jose, you're going to click this search button here, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. Okay. But one thing you're going to want to change are the statuses, appointment set, and then obviously you'll follow along. 
you met with this person? Are they likely, unlikely? Did they sign the agreement with you guys? Are they ready to move forward? And then now you pretty much have your client. So you go ahead and send this over. This will go to the admin team, the senior agent, the lender, and then they'll go ahead and jot it down in their system. I know we're utilizing Sisu and everything's being incorporated right now, but in the time frame, if we use if we have to use multiple tracking, then that's what we just have to do until everything's implemented together. But if we keep this clean and concise while we integrate to Sisu, then everything should work flawlessly. Right now, moving forward, once this has been sent out, another thing that another thing that you're going to have to do to your client is you're going to go ahead and go into the clipboard once again, right? Now, you're going to have to send over the buyer's consultation confirmation email, right? This is the direct email, not just a Google invite. This is a direct email to the client, letting them know a little bit about us, our reviews. It's kind of like the, the cover page, the flashy page that you sent over. They're like, oh, wow. Like, let me, you know, a lot of our clients, let's say a lot of our clients always say, hey, send me an email, send me an email. We get that all the time. Here's the email that they're finally going to get after they, they've talked to you about it many times. Another thing that you're going to have to change over first and foremost is you're going to remove Blanca's name here. Don't forget to do this. You don't want to send an email coming from Charles and an asterisk that says, here is her contact information, Blanca Medellin. <laughs> Right. Blanca would love that. But if we delete it, then it looks more cohesive. Right. Now, I usually just delete that. And to make everything clean and clear, depending on how you want to do it, this is just how I personally like to do it. So once again, we'll just have the client's name here, home buying consultation with PRG real estate. The way that I like to make it look good is I'll go back into here. I'll go ahead and click this. And I like to copy this so i'll control c i'll copy it and then i will go back into firepoint and then i will just fill it in here right if you and and, and then you can also insert date and time through zoom you'll go ahead and copy paste it I like to bold it. If you guys want to go ahead and make it even look more professional, for lack of better words. So I like to bold that just so that I can make sure that they see it. And then the Zoom link that you guys are going to want to copy is you're going to go over here. You're going to go into join Zoom meeting here, control C, and then you're going to go back to your PowerPoint and then you're going to add that line here. Boom, right? Now, this one is heavily important. I always send this one because not only is it just like, damn, they sent me so many notifications to me. Like, no, these guys are serious. They sent reminders. They sent it on the Google Calendar. I got a Google invite. Now they're sending a personal home buying consultation email with whatever agent there is. It's the Zoom meeting, the exact time that reflects what the time is on the calendar. It's in the subject, the exact time it's gonna be on the calendar. And if they want to do a little bit more digging, here's what we're going to go over. And then if they want to review the team's work, website, Zillow profile, and the best of Zillow award, right? Now, if you get an email like this with multiple reminders, it's how many times, and it's kind of with the follow-up, how many times is, is the client going to see this? And they're like, yeah, no, I'm going I'm to meet. Oh, I sent them another email. I'm going to meet, right? Everything that you can do to stay consistent in front of the client's face will give you more of an opportunity to convert from set so man, I have a very, very high rate of if I set an appointment, I have a pretty high rate of being able to meet that client. I have an even higher rate for signing that client, right? And I think it's just because we've kept everything so uniform, we've kept all of the touch, you know, all of the touches that we talk about always consistent. And we're basically squeezing as much as we can to make sure those clients show up, right? The service starts from the initial phone call and the appointment setting. Right. And then the follow up, like I said, you're going to have an amazing phone call. The last thing you want to happen is have an amazing phone call. And then they never hear from Fu again for a week until we meet. Well, I'm not going to meet with some guy who I sent an appointment a week ago and he hasn't even spoken to me at that time. Right. 
Now, once this is all finished, you go ahead and send this over and then you do the follow-up and that pretty much wraps up the appointment setting uh, protocol. So these are our main goals. When we set an appointment, I know I went a little bit extra into going into what we essentially need in terms of the clerical stuff. And one of the main points I'm going to tell you guys is if you guys are going to set your appointments, put it on a sheet of paper, put it on your laptop, put it on your notes, and then the clerical work, the Google calendar, all of the Zoom in link invites and everything, you do that after you're finished prospecting. That's the best and most uniform way to do it. Otherwise, you're going to spend 45 minutes writing up one Google Calendar invite when you could have booked three more potential appointments. Cool? Mm -hmm. Does that make does that make sense, everybody? Pretty simple, pretty easy. Yeah. All right, guys. That's pretty much the appointment setting protocol. I missed the first five minutes. You might go back to them. Yeah. So the first five minutes, um, we basically just went over ringing the bell. Okay. Right. You, 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 after that, and we, I always say that ringing the bell is like one of the most exciting things because you're hyped up, you're ready to go. You booked an appointment. Your clients are excited. You're freaking excited. Your partners are excited. Everybody's raging for you. Right. You're like, oh shit, I put my freaking first appointment, my second appointment. You're excited. Ring that bell, ring that bell as hard as you can. Right. Because then that drives your motivation. That's a motivational factor for you guys. And then secondly, just to keep a uh, recap real quick, what you're going to want to do. Oh, I don't know if I can open it again, is, oh, it's right here. You're going to go into the Google Calendar, and then you're going to set the appointment just as how I have it structured here, right? And the reason for this is you want to have everybody, every team member's name first, and then whatever buyer's consultation last, because no one, no one cares what your appointment is. It, well, no one cares about what your appointment is about. Everybody cares about who is available or unavailable at that time. Right. Now, once you set all that up, then everything is kind of just straightforward from there. That was pretty much the first five minutes. Cool. Cool. All right, guys. They said this video is posted on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Solid. And then the whole video is there from the whole video is there for the whole appointment setting protocol. Um, solid, guys. I, I do have a question. Yeah. Too. So just kind of random thought. What do you what would you say is the most effective follow up? Like, say, if they are busy, you know, you, the appointment's a week and a half out or like five, six days out? Just <laughs> like a phone call or like a text? I, I both. Sorry. Yeah. I like Sorry. to do, I like to do both. Okay. Generally, if it's, if you know, it's like during their work time, like I usually say like 9am to five, um, I always like to send a text message. I like to, in a weird way, uh, in the sense of like how I, I wouldn't say bait. I don't like using the word bait, but just to kind of keep interest, I'll send them a property. Cause on your initial phone call, you're going to be talking about things that they want. Yeah. Right. You're like, hey, where are you looking? San Jose, three bedroom, two bath under a million bucks. Right. It's our jobs to search for the properties for the clients. Right. Our job isn't to sit there and then have the client reach out to us when they found a house. That's a part of our, our, our job yeah. is to be able to find those off markets, to be able to find those pocket listings, to be able to outsource partners coming soon. Right. We don't just wait for anything to go live. So, hey, Mr. Client, I found this off market on 123 Main Street. I'm going to go ahead and send it over to you. If you want to go ahead and check it out, let's go ahead and check it out after work. I know you're a busy guy or busy gal, but I think it may be, be something that works for us, right? More than, because you have to remember, one of the things that are, one of the things that we always forget is the client's ultimate goal is what? To get a house, right? As much as they would love to see us, the one thing that we can provide that's a tangible object is the house, right? That's the reason they're meeting. Now, if you show them, it's like, we're even a carrot in their face. Like, Hey, I got this property on 123 Main Street. Oh, shoot. I didn't even see this one on Redfin. I didn't see this one on Zillow. Well, let's go ahead and check it out tomorrow. You have some time, maybe around six o'clock. And now you're building the rapport. Now you're building, now you're building you Thomas's value, Charles's value, Fu's value. Now he's just like, all right, well, it's not just an agent who wants to sit down on the meeting. We haven't even met yet, but if you guys are more than willing, yeah, no, I sent you a property already, right? Now you're doing more than what another agent could be possibly doing already, right? Why wouldn't they want to meet? You get what I'm saying? Now, what I do also, if it's like later in the evening, maybe around six or seven, I always like to think about everything, like what I would be doing at that time, maybe six or seven o'clock, they've already had dinner, they settled down. Hey, just wanted to call. Did you have an opportunity to see that property I sent over? It's an off market right now. You want to, you want to spend some time to go check it out? Oh, I'm busy today. All right, well, what about tomorrow? Right, and then that gives you an opportunity to follow up tomorrow. Oh, I don't know about tomorrow. Just yet, I don't know if I'm gonna be busy. Well, I'll check in with you tomorrow. Everything adds on to the possible touches, the possible points, interactions you're going to get. Now, let's say that week goes by 
now you're having this full-blown conversation with this client emojis are happening they're freaking liking and hearting all of your guys if you guys ever go through my text threads with my clients they're sending memes whatever it is you know and that's how that rapport is built that client's like there to stay hopefully right and then by that time now you know you didn't just send an appointment send an email you've interacted with the client you maybe met them at a property you've built that rapport now they're like hey now they're sending you the text message back excited to meet with you next wednesday can't wait to talk about all the properties that we saw now your buyer's consultation is just expanded now you're just on rapport building now you're building that lifelong relationship um and that's generally how you guys want to reach that level with your clients just so you know in your head you're like nah like i want to meet with this client but this client really wants to meet with me that's how the feeling should be when you're you know booking these appointments cool cool any more questions all right solid hey, guys really thanks everybody in the zoom hey, really quick yeah. is, it, is a presentation available how are you you're going to pass it out or what's 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 the deal what's going to happen with that? Yeah. So that's an amazing presentation by the way. um so, <laughs> yes yeah thanks with the presentation i'll ask dj on how to do it and i'll add one more um, because I have to add like the, the firepoint thing and then I'll have it available maybe on the team resources. I'll have DJ navigate the presentation for the team training protocol. Cool, 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 man. Set. I think, yeah, you did a great job on that presentation, man. I think, I think it should definitely get passed out or at least, at least be, at least be known where it's going to be at. Right. I mean, what do you think you can? Hey guys. Yeah. So, um, we'll have this in Slack. If, uh, get with DJ, um, AJ, if you can, so you can upload it to Slack to our training channel. But all of our trainings, guys, just a reminder to everyone, these are all recorded and then they're uploaded to our YouTube channel where we host them at. And the link to get there is prgcoaching.com. So if you go to prgcoaching.com, that takes you to our YouTube channel and all the trainings we do every week, Zillow Flex, our team meetings, these Wednesday trainings, they're all hosted on there. So that's the whole archive there where they'll be hosted. Cool. Good Follow job, AJ. Hey, good job, AJ. Thanks, guys. Catch you all later. Have a good day. Bye.